living the best life? No. You think them people want to be sitting up in that bank all day? Hell no, they don't want to do that. They doing that because they have to. So never think that they are trying to hide the truth from you or they keeping you, trying to keep you in slavery. They don't even know. They have no idea what you're talking about. They are, a lot of those people are dumbfounded when you talk. I was in the bank today. The lady was, I was on the phone though talking. She was all in my conversation because they curious too. They want to, she heard what I'm talking about and the man trying to make it seem like I'm crazy. But the ladies that's sitting up there listening to me, they like, shit, this man don't sound like he crazy to me. It sound like what he's saying makes a lot of goddamn sense. It's just that they ain't used to nobody coming in and, and asserting their rights. And the system has been running in, in this default for so long that even though we have the right to purchase goods, nobody's never made no purchases before. Nobody's never bought agreements. Everybody's always tried to buy a car, a house. You've never bought the agreement. You've never purchased an agreement ever in your life. You always tried to purchase the car. It, 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 see, that's the thing. They used to us purchasing the items. They're not used to us coming in and saying we want to purchase the installment agreement. They're not used to us coming in and saying that we want to purchase the lease agreement. I, I'm not trying to agree to be liable for the lease. No, no. You're offering me a lease agreement at 50000 for rents. I'm going to purchase that lease. I'm going to give you a receipt for it, and that lease is going to become my lease. Now that it's mine by the purchase, I'm going to turn around and use the same lease that will actually put me in debt to actually use it for my benefit because now it belongs to me. So whatever rents you was going to originally charge me for using the lease, now that I've purchased it, now I'm going to charge you for using my lease because now it belongs to me. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be acquiring property and then agreeing to pay for the property by labor. You're not supposed to do that. So piece of paper it don't work like that acquiring property and then agreeing to pay for the property by labor you're not supposed to do that you don't give your labor for a piece of paper it don't work like that when you get a piece of paper in your hand the piece of paper is evidencing your rights to something else so when i deal with a dealership or anybody, I'm not going, to, you think I'm going in a dealership to go buy a car? Is that what I'm going to the dealership for? Because if you think that that's why Brother Isaiah going in the dealership is to go buy a car, well, you got a whole nother thing coming. I don't want no damn car. I want the installment agreement. That's what I want. I want that agreement. I want that $50 dollar finance charge that's sitting on the face of that damn instrument that's what i'm purchasing i don't know about y'all but i'm purchasing the purchase price whatever price that instrument is purchased at that's what i'm purchasing i don't know about you you might go in and you might go purchase the mortgage or you go purchase the house you you enter into a mortgage to buy a house you see that's stupid that sounds stupid as hell why would you enter into a mortgage to buy a house when you enter into the mortgage to purchase the house using the mortgage? See, we've been, we've been, we have not been using the credits because we didn't know what the credits was. Hold up, hold up. So whenever you open up an account, you're issuing what's called principal. What is principal? Principle is the asset that funds the account. So the principle for my mortgage would be the mortgage note. The principle for my apartment would be the lease agreement. That's the principle. The principle for my rental car would be the rental agreement. The rental agreement is the principle, right? The original instruments that you sign are considered as principal. On their face, they're worth their value. On their face. So if you got an instrument and it's financed at 50000 that instrument is a $50,000 instrument. So when you sign it and give it to the seller, he receives principal from you. He receives the principal amount of the asset on his face. 
but you also got to give him the interest. Remember, we're dealing with interest too. You're dealing with principal and interest. Whenever you assign your value, remember the interest comes, the principal is just the face of the instrument. Let me let me break this down to you real quick, man. I I I asked that I asked I asked the power within myself to give me the strength to break this down to y'all to where y'all can understand exactly what it is that I'm really trying to say to you. I pray that you understand what I'm about to say because it's going to make a big difference if you understand what I'm saying. All right, so the principal is always the instrument that you agree to pay, okay? You all, We always agree to pay the instrument, the principal, all right? But when you sign that principal instrument and you hand it off, that's considered as a tender. According to law, you did tender the instrument to them because you signed it and then handed it off, which constitutes a tender, a payment, right? Now, the reason why they say that your account is outstanding is not because you did not tender the payment to them. You did tender the payment. You signed the instrument and you tendered it to them. That's known as principal. You paid the principal, but you did not pay the interest. That covers that principal asset. So, that's why we tell you to say pay to the order on the face of it or on the back of it when you hand it off. Why? Because what gave the principal value? How did that principal note become able to be pledged as the principal? When you signed it, now the seller that gave it to you can accept it back from you as a principal note that you've given value to. Now, the only reason why he's holding you in an encumbrance is because when you supplied the value to his principal note, you failed to pay it to his order. <laughs> you, that's where you messed up at. You did not pay the amount that you supplied. You supplied something, and then you didn't pay it. Instead, you just paid the principal, which was the note on his face. But you didn't pay what you supplied. Meaning you gave some kind of interest, some kind of signature that covers some other kind of value, and you didn't make that value that you gave payable to the man's order. So now he got a note with value on it that's not payable to him. Do that make... Man, I pray that makes sense to you. I pray it makes sense to you. You issued a note, you gave the value, but the value is still just remaining in the note. It's not payable to anybody. It's just on the note. It got a signature on it showing that value was given, but it's nowhere on earth that it shows where that value has been paid to anybody. Do that make sense? I know it makes sense. It makes a whole lot of goddamn sense, don't it? I know. Now, the reason why I'm breaking this down, right, is because I just went in the bank, and they just tried to tell me that I told them I'll come in to purchase <laughs> purchase a, a bank account i told him i came in to purchase a deposit account agreement to use a bank account they ain't used to nobody talking to them like that i know i know they ain't used to nobody speaking them kind of ways to them right so they looking all confused i say no i said it's all good i say you just do everything the way you normally do it but i'm gonna tell you what i learned to do i talk too much I, I talk too much, so I give them a heads up. <laughs> so I got to stop talking so much because I be telling them what I'm going to do to them, right? I don't, I'm cocky. So I like to tell them what I'm going to do to them, right? Then when I start telling them, they start getting nervous, right? So anyway, to make a long story short, I told the lady, I say, look, this is what I need you to do. I need you to just fill out the application. Don't worry about it. I said, when I get the application, she said, well, you can sign it in here. I said, nah, I need you to print that out. I said, because I need to give a full endorsement of any rights that I may have. I say, if I can't give my rights on, on an endorsement on a pad, I said, I need you to print that out so I can give a full endorsement. So they, they looking at me because I'm telling you, because I, I, I ain't playing with them. So I tell them, so they print it out, whatever. So they wait, they wait. They don't even want to give me the documents, yo. They don't even, 
They don't even want it. They didn't even want to open up the bank account for me. You know what I'm saying? They tried everything to try to say, well, we don't know if we can open this bank account for you because you're saying something about you want to use the application as an investment security. We've never heard that. We have to call other people to make sure because we want to make sure we open up the type of account you want. And I've never heard nobody using their application as an investment security before. I told them, I said, well, that ain't my problem. <laughs> That ain't, my, that ain't my problem if you don't understand what an investment security is. I got a right to invest this security to use it for my personal family and household benefit. I, I don't care. So what, I, what I'm what i coming to the realization to tell you, right, a lot of times you're going to have issues because you're dealing with uninformed agents that don't know nothing about what you're doing. So even though you have every right to do what you're doing, when you're dealing with somebody that's uninformed, it makes it a lot harder for you to get the remedies that you desire. So it, it is discouraging to a to a point because in your mind, you'll be like, man, this stuff don't even work every time. It ain't that. You're just dealing with uninformed people. That's all it is. It ain't that the stuff don't work. It's that you might have sent in a payment instrument and it might have came across the desk of an idiot. And when he got it, he looking like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so he denied you something that you had the right to. And then in your mind, you saying, man, that shit don't work. So you don't even do nothing about it. You don't call, you don't do nothing. You just give up. You got to stop doing it. You got to remember, they told us, he said that they will have plausible deniability for anything that we assert when, if we found out. So why are y'all acting like y'all don't understand what's going on? Everything that we doing right now when you getting met with adversity is plausible deniability. How would they have plausible deniability? Because the agents are in, uninformed. So they're going to deny you. They're going to deny the hell out of you because they are uninformed. They do not know what you're talking about. That's why you got to learn how to go to the FDIC Go over their head. You got to learn how to assert your rights. You got to learn how to go re record in the county. You got to learn how to go and claim titles because you don't need to be talking to nobody. It's, it's all about receiving property, securing property, and then assigning that security note over to the holder so he can know about these cattles are now secured. This is my cattle now. All right. Now, I want to say this, right? When you go, when you go in and you're doing these transactions, don't tell the people what you're doing. Don't don't even tell them what you're doing. Just go in, play like, just play dumb. Play like you don't know shit. Go in, act like you like you the dumb, like you just like everybody else in here that's dumb. You got to, you got to play dumb, yo. Because if you go in and you show them any sign that you know what you're doing, boy, they're gonna be watching you like a hawk. Every every time you turn around, everybody watching you because they hear you talking about credit and trans. They looking at everybody in there watching you, bro. You see what I'm saying? Because you're talking different. So what you do is don't worry about that. Learn how to endorse your documents. I told you when you sign, sign with your name and social security number. So you always sign your name and social, right? That makes the document a private document. Not only does it make it private, but it's a purchase into your account because whoever signs is the purchaser. So if I sign the name and social, who's the purchaser? The account principal, right? So when you sign your name and social, just tell them you want a copy of the signature card, right? Once they give you a copy of the signature card, a copy of the contract or whatever you got, now you got proof of a deposit. How do I know? Because the, that copy of that instrument is proof that you just made the deposit with that. Why would that institution give you a copy of an instrument unless you just made a deposit with them? You made some kind of deposit, you gave them something, and they give you a receipt. Instead of them writing you out a receipt like a sales receipt from a store, they don't do it like that. Instead, their, re their receipt is a copy of the deposit. When you make the deposit of the installment or the uh, bank account agreement, when they give you a copy, that's your receipt right there. That's proof that a deposit was made. It shows what was deposited with them and what it was for, right? Now, that receipt is also proof of a loan extended to you. It's proof, it's proof that a loan was extended to you, but it's also proof of a deposit that was made by you. So the, app, the, the, the signature card is proof of a deposit made by you, but it's also proof of deposit account agreement offered to you. I want you to get it. So it's also proof that a deposit account 
agreement which has insurance coverage because they all insured banks which shows that they offered you an insured account right and the copy of it with your signature on it shows that you did accept it right it shows that you are in possession of the offer because you signed it which means that you did accept it now it's not complete yet it's not complete yet the acceptance is not complete until you record your title over that document. All right? You've already accepted it, meaning you're already liable. Already liable. Now what you need to do that you are in possession by way of signature and acceptance is go and record your intention of how you plan to accept this obligation. Do you accept it for performance to pay it? Or do you accept it as a loan or an offer of some sort of right for you to receive something? And now you're acknowledging what you have in your possession and who it was from and what it was offered as and your acceptance of that offer to do everything that the document states that the one who offered it would do for you upon you except in the title those are two different types of transactions so you got to learn how to accept the goods the only reason why you get kicked out your house or you get kicked out for eviction is because you're in possession of the lease you didn't accept the terms of the lease you 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 accepted well you did accept the terms but you accept the terms for performance you didn't accept the terms uh uh as as ownership for credit you did see you you can accept the terms by performing the terms or you can accept the terms to have the terms perform for you so we have two ways we can do this either we can accept the terms in, in a way of us performing it like where we actually perform the instrument or we can accept the terms and assign our rights to the one that we accepted the instrument from to perform it for us and which you should be doing it that way you should accept it and then demand that the one who you were signing it to act in your place to perform whatever duties you had to perform. So if you got an obligation to pay, you accept your obligation to pay and you acknowledge the terms of your obligation and you agree to pay anything you lawfully owe. And then under the terms of the agreement, you assign your rights or your titles to the holder. You make whatever payment obligations you got payable to his order. You tell them that you're giving up your rights to the title. I don't want to be the title holder no more. I'm tired of paying these goddamn bills, man. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm tired of holding the title, man. Every time I hold the title, I end up having to pay, man. I went and got a loan and became the owner of the loan and transferred the loan, but still became, but still was holding the title. How the hell did I transfer the loan, but I transferred the title? But I'm still liable for all the obligations of the loan if the title transferred when I transferred the loan. Wouldn't that mean that if I transferred my title to them, that they are the ones responsible now because they're holding the title? What is the title? Isn't the title the debt instrument that creates the debt? So if they, if I transferred the title from me to them, then that means that I would no longer be liable if I gave my title up, right? If I gave the title up to them, and I put the title in their possession, then that means that they will be liable. The only way I can see them not being li liable is if I put the title in their possession without paying it, and within 30 days, I never secured any rights against it to have it paid to them. So now they went and recorded a title against the same property, and they didn't say that they had a right to be paid. They didn't say, hey, we the creditors or none of that. They didn't do that. What they did is said that we received property from another and the property is outstanding and it's not been titled. So what they do is for the benefit of a creditor, remember, they're not the creditor, you are. So what they do for your benefit, they go down in the county and they record a document against the property of another person that they're in possession of. Now, to the law is possession. So being that they have direct possession, they have a high, they have a direct ownership. They do. They have, they're not the, 
the the owner, but they do have an ownership interest, being that they're in possession. If if you're in possession of the straw man, you don't you didn't create the straw man, but you are in possession, which gives you a direct control. All ownership represents its control. So if I'm in possession of the taxpayer, I have the right to control the taxpayer. If I'm in possession of the driver's license, I have the right to control the driver's license. If I'm in, so that's all it means, yo. That's all it means. Anything that you are in possession of, you have the right to control it, right? So when you give up your possession to another, you're giving that other person the right to control whatever property that you have the right in. So that's why if you give your property up, remember, your property remains secured for 21 days. For 21 days, they can't bill you. They can't do nothing. Everything is secured. All you got to do is just make your intentions known within that 21 day period. Tell, go and record a document against that account. The same name, same address, their same information. You're using the same information you use to open the account up with. The same parties, the same addresses of all the parties in the subject matter. We still talk about a bank account. We still talk about a deposit account agreement. It's the exact same thing. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make a replica of that same agreement. Who, my name and information, their name and information. What, what's the subject matter? What was the terms? The terms was $250,000 worth of depository insurance coverage. And then I'm going to go into what I plan on doing with my property. All right. Do I accept that insurance? Am I going to use that insurance? Am I going to make that insurance where it's available for the one holding my account to apply it to the account for my benefit? Because if I don't give him the rights to apply my interest against my own asset and give and make my interest payable to him. See, you got to remember, as the owner of the record, you have the highest claim. What that means is, is if I own something, it was your instrument, but you gave it to me to purchase at a discount. So you gave it to me just by transferring it to me, and I used it. Once I signed it, it became my instrument. Now, I own it, but I gave it back to you. Now, you're in possession of what I own. Now that you're in possession, it gives you a right to control the property because you're in possession. But being that you don't own it, then you limited with how you can utilize this property, right? So if I don't want him to basically assert a claim against me for giving him limited interest or limited rights in the property he holding, then what I would do is go and record my ownership against his, the property I gave to him, and then I will release full control to him. I will release all property to him, meaning that you can't just give him the principal. You got to also release the interest. You got to go and record your ownership. And then you got to say as the owner, you got to release the rest of the property. You can't just give him part of it. You can't just give him the principal, the paper. You got to give him also what your signature represents. You got to supply that to him too. When you gave your signature, you put a whole new value to the note. But you got to make sure that that value that you put on that note also is able to be used. If it's not able to be used, partner, don't get mad when they start billing you, when they start repoing your cars, when they start taking your property away because you still don't understand where your value is coming from. You're still thinking that the instrument and you're not understanding that your signature is your value. And when you supply your signature, you need to make your value payable to somebody because he can't use your signature if you don't make the interest that your signature represents payable to him. I hope that makes sense to y'all, man. I'm getting ready to get up off of her. And like I said, uh, this is just off the dome and me just going off the dome with just little stuff that I got locked in. But, hey, if you didn't sign up to come out uh, to Dallas, I know it's a short-term thing, but if you want to be there, you can sign up and get this information. If you can't make it, just get the, re get the replay.